Okay, I think it's recording. If not, whatever. So this is number 52. So at the top number 52, we're starting functions. This was on your cycle one assessment and people were getting confused because they seen the f of x versus a y and I told you it was the same exact thing. So today I'm going to teach you functions and then we're going to uh, graph functions and talk about the graphs. So they're not going to be linear. We're going to do absolute value and quadratics. So for number one, this is super easy. This is just basic. This is substitution. It says y equals 3x plus 8. If x equals 2, find y. So all you're going to do is you're going to take your x value and you're going to plug it in to where x is. Yes, tell me the answer. Y is 14. Beautiful. So you have 3 multiplied by 2 plus 8. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 8. What is it? 14? Okay, so that is normal. You should have did this last year. What changes is between number one and number two is it turns from an equation to function notation, but it's literally the same exact thing. It's written slightly different. It says X is equal to two, find F of X. So what you're doing is you're finding when X is equal to two. So what you write is F of two, everywhere there's an X, it's being replaced with two. And then I have negative two multiplied by two plus three. So even like before, whenever I brought down the y equals every single time until I got to the final answer, this is not f multiplied by 2, it's just f of 2. So that's going to be in the final answer. So instead of saying y equals da 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 da, da it's going to say f of 2 equals da 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 da. So what's negative 2 times 2? Negative 1. Oh, sorry. Negative sorry. 4. Oh, okay. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. So the answer is f of 2 equals negative 1. So it's just another way to write the same exact thing as what you've done before. And that's why when you took cycle one, I said it's literally the same thing as f of x. Okay. Because it says. Okay, so number three, I want you to take a minute. It tells you what y is, and this time you're finding x. So you're using basically opposite operations to work backwards. So take a minute. I know we already did all these. Here. If you did three, go to four. We already did that two. Then wait a second. So for number three, what do you end up getting? Five. Good. Five. Negative five. Yeah. Number three is an equation where number four is in function notation, but you're doing the same exact process. Mm -hmm. This time you know what y is, so you're getting rid of that. Same thing with number four. It tells you what f of x is equal to, so you're replacing all of f of x with 44. I'll redo this real quick. You judge. You better. Oh. So what do you get for number four? I haven't even started yet. Wait. Am I going too fast? Yes. I'm sorry. It's 44 when you plug it in, and then I added 12 to both sides to make 56. <laughs> Divide by 4 to both sides, and you get 40. Okay, so let's talk about domain and range. This is where the graphs come into play. So that was just kind of like a a warm up. This is the difference between an equation and function notation. It's literally the same thing. Just figuring out where you're plugging it in. So domain is talking about your X values, just like you say X and Y in a coordinate point or in the alphabet X, Y, Z. The way you say domain and range, domain is first, range is next. So domain is talking about the possible X values. Of 
of a function. Range is talking about the possible y values of a function. Intervals of increase and decrease, these are written as um, inequalities. So on graphs, as long as it's not a linear function, there's a, a piece where it's decaying and a piece where it's increasing. So whenever we talk about uh, quadratics, which we're kind of talking about today, not like we're not getting super thoroughly into it, but we are going to like graph them. Those look like our U's. They're upside down or like right side up. They look like happy faces. And uh, so there's a piece where it's increasing and a piece where it's decreasing. So this is represented by saying X is going to be greater than some number and X is less than some number. And that number is referencing the X axis. Where is it turning from decreasing to increasing or increasing to decreasing? Um, which once we get into an example, it'll make sense. A maximum and a minimum is just the highest or lowest Y value on the graph. And N behavior means overall is this graph increasing or decreasing over time? So you would just state increasing or decreasing. A graph can have both increasing and decreasing parts, but overall from left to right, like is it increasing or decreasing from left to right? So let's talk about number one. This will make sense hopefully once we do an example. So for number one, it says the graph or graph the function f of x equals 3x squared using a table of values. So I'm going to take these x values and I'm going to plug it into this function. I'm going to get the y value and plot those points. So what is the first x value I have to plug in? Negative 2. So I'm going to take this f of x equals 3x squared. The first value I'm plugging in is negative 2. In parentheses, you're substituting that value in. So thinking about PEMDAS, should I multiply 3 by negative 2 first, or should I get rid of my exponents first? Exponents. exponents. So what is negative 2 squared? Negative 4. Ooh. Oh, four. Ooh. Wait, so is it positive or is it negative? Positive. It is positive, because a negative times a negative will make positive. So I have ne f of negative 2 equals 3 times positive 4. And then when I multiply those, what do I get? 12. 12. So can anybody take a guess at what that coordinate point is going to be? Negative 2, 12. Negative two 12. So take a minute and plot that coordinate point. So at negative 2, the y value is 12. You'll see, you can condense steps. You don't need to show every single step. Okay. Um, so what's the next X value you plug in? Negative one, so I'm gonna find F of negative one this time. I'm using the original equation. I have three, then in X's place, I'm plugging in negative one. Yeah. So I simplify my exponents first. What's negative one to the power of two? One, positive one, right? So I have f of negative one equals three times one, which is what? Three. And this is where you should probably pick on that. You can like skip steps, right? So plot that coordinate point, negative one, positive three. Josh, what'd you say the next one was? Zero. zero, zero, because if you take zero and you square it, that's zero. And zero times three is going to be zero. So that's the origin. The next value I'm plugging in is one. If I take one and I square it, what do I get? One. one. And then I multiply it by three, I get three. three. Mm. This is clearly not linear. Then I plug in two. Two squared is uh, four. four. Four multiplied by three will make 
12. See how this is like a mirror image? Mm -hmm. What so do you call that? That is a parabola. Like this is your first like quadratic function. You probably actually maybe made a graph of. You probably made. You probably discussed like a quadratic. It looks like a U. An exponential looks like a ramp. You probably just like talked about it. Um, so the, the important thing about a parabola, which is when you have an exponent of two versus an absolute value function, is this does not come to a point as in a V. It actually makes like a U. So I want you to kind of start down here and make sure it's kind of like curved. So and then you can connect the top points to the other points. Do not make it a V. A point is going to be our absolute value functions. So try your best. You just don't want this to come to a perfect point, like a perfect vertex point. So the whole point of this lesson is to actually discuss this stuff over here. For your classwork tomorrow, which was supposed to be your homework, um, the graphs are going to be provided for you. You just need to understand the following based on the graphs. So domain is your pop the, your possible X values. So this graph could technically extend. I could zoom into the graph and make the numbers really, really small, or I could zoom out and make them even bigger, right? This isn't tied to a word problem. This is just some function, right? So is it possible for me to plug in an X value of 100 and get an answer? Yes. Yes. Is it going to be really massive? No. Yes. yes. That's why we don't do it, right? But is it possible? Yes, because it's not tied to a word problem. So your domain is you're talking about your X values. So is this X value, what is the smallest X value that this graph is ever going to go to if I were to zoom out all the way on this graph? Zero. It, I went to negative one here. Negative three is. Negative infinity. If I kept zooming out, this is technically going this way, correct? So eventually, is it going to pass three and four and negative five and negative six? If I kept zooming out on a graph, right? It, could it reach that point? Yes. What about. The positive numbers. What's the biggest X value this is ever going to use? Infinity. infinity. So you could say negative infinity to positive infinity. But instead of saying that, because that literally means every single number, you say all real numbers. The way you write domain is you use a little bracket. Domain is talking about the X value, so you need to put a variable X. And then you put a line. And then you can literally write out the words all real numbers. Or... Oh, the, the, it's like a R, R with a line through it. Yeah, R. It's like a capital R with an extra line. So these would have to be multiple choice. I could show you really quick. Oh, I'm recording. Should I do this? I'm just going to show you anyways. What else? These would have to be like multiple choice on your EOC. It could look like, where is it? It would look like this. Like they're going to say like domain, like which one is it? Is this our test? Yeah. Oh, I don't think I showed a problem. Oh. Okay, so let's talk about range. That is the closing bracket. No, you don't need the little, no, just the line. Okay, so the range is talking about the possible Y values. So range is a little bit different. That is talking about your Y value. So if you're looking at this graph, what is the smallest Y value this graph will ever go to? Why is it not negative infinity? Because it goes back up. It goes back up. The smallest value this is ever going to go to is zero. What's the largest value this graph is ever going to go to? Infinity. Infinity. Because it has arrows, it's going to continue into the mathematical abyss of what is happening. OK, so how could we say that using an inequality? All real numbers, but. But negatives? Y is, y, is greater than zero. y has to be greater than or equal to zero. So your Y values, it starts at zero. That's the lowest it goes. Has to be greater than or equal to zero. It can be equal to zero because it actually touches zero. OK, let's talk about intervals of increase. So from left to right, you have two pieces of this graph. In this section, the graph is going down because from left to right, it's going down. And then it turns and it's like, JK, I'm going back up. So which portion, the left side or the right side, represents the increase? The right side. So if I am talking about the right side of my graph, this is the right side, correct? Do, 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 do. Yep. At what X value does it start to increase? Zero. 
zero. Yes. So at x is greater than zero, that would represent the interval of increase. Why did I not put or equal to zero? Because you're not counting where you start at because technically I am like turning at that point. I'm not increasing or decreasing because that's basically when I stop and I turn around the opposite way. So the decrease is talking about the other side of the graph. So how would I write that in reference to X at like, not Y, X. X has to be less than zero. Oh, I said that. The interval of decrease is starting from negative infinity and stopping at zero. At zero, that's when it turns to being positive or increasing. So when X is greater than zero, this portion of my graph, that's whenever it's increasing. When X is less than zero, this portion of my graph, that's whenever it's actually decreasing. And I know that it's like, there's an arrow going up this way, so it's actually going up. It's actually from left to right, decaying, and then turning around and going up. Does this graph have a maximum number it will ever reach? No. Technically right here, it's like 14, but could I zoom out? Yes. yes. So this is an A. It doesn't apply either. Generally, you're not you're either going to have a maximum or a minimum. Once we get later on in the year, you can have both because uh, then we're going to do like actual squiggles. What is the minimum value? Zero. Zero. And end behavior talks about it overall. Is this graph increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Increasing. And how do you know that? Because from left to right, it ends increasing and behavior at the oh, ending point exactly. it's increasing so it's not necessarily about the math it's more about understanding the graph so let's try another one let's do um let's do number four i want to do the hard ones with you so that way you don't get super confused at home so four says graph the following function f of x equals negative absolute value of x minus two plus three. So first thing I have to do is fill in my table of values. So what's the first x value I'm going to plug into my function? One. Four. one. What? I have a negative sign out front. I need to make sure I write that in my equation. Absolute value symbol one minus two plus three. Okay, so I have to do the brackets first or the absolute value symbol first. I have to simplify this. What is one, take away two? Negative one. Negative one. I got that. What's the absolute value of negative one? One. And then I have a negative sign out front, so what happens? It becomes negative anyways. Because really the absolute value of negative one is positive one, but I have that minus sign out front, so that makes that one negative. What's negative one plus three? Two. two. So that first coordinate point is gonna be one, two. What's the next value I'm gonna plug in? Two. two. So in the absolute value symbols, I'm going to figure that out first. What is two? Take away two. Zero. zero. What's the absolute value of zero? zero? Zero. Can I make zero negative? No. So what is that really? Another wasp. What? Oh my God, there's another wasp. It was near Tyler's seat. It's, it's over there. Yeah, no, it's blind. Blind. Oh, wow. There's there like a nest. There is. They spray. Can you make that a near me. Not near me. <laughs> <laughs> give me your shoes. I got it. I got it. Extra credit. I got it. I got it. Give me your shoes. You missed it. You missed it. Like, Rizal, give me your shoes. Rizal, give me your shoes. No. I don't want my shoes to be. You suck. Jackson, kill it. Yeah, Jackson, murder. Oh, wait. Where'd it go? It's on the ground. Oh, Lord. No, it's not. Come on, I'm more extra credit. It's on. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Jesus. Are you missing? Get it. How are you missing? 
I don't know how to. Okay, sorry, online kids, whoever's watching this on my YouTube channel. There was a wasp in my portable. There's actually two. Okay, anyways, um, so that coordinate point was two, three. The next value you have to plug in is three. So let's think about this. I mean, if you need to show math, you can. What's three minus two? One. 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 What's the absolute value of one? One. 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 So what's negative one plus three? Two. two. The main focus is not you plugging in the numbers. The main focus is understanding this part. So I don't want to spend a bunch of time on like the math part. That's not like a, you're not gonna have to do that on your test, on your homework. Okay. We don't have to do this on our test. No, you need to do this on your test. This is the point of the lesson. This is just like practice using function notation. So I have four. What's four minus two? Positive two. Shh, Jackson, go sit down. The absolute value of two, Jackson, go sit down, is two. But it becomes negative because there's a negative outside. What's negative two plus three? One. Positive one. And then I have five. Five minus two is three. three. The absolute value of three is just three. It becomes negative. What's negative three plus three? Yeah. Zero. So the main part is you understanding this portion. So take a minute, plot your points. It doesn't have to be perfect. Perfect. You're not a computer. It's not going to be perfect. This is an absolute value function. So unlike a quadratic equation, a quadratic represents a U. This is an absolute value function. So it's actually a V. So come to a specific point. The vertex. Three, two, four, one. Yeah. No. I tell you every single day, wait till my phone goes off. So your domain is your possible X values. So if I zoomed out on this graph, what is the smallest X value it will ever go to? One. Negative infinity. What about the positive numbers? Um, it would be two. Is it is it going to stop at two? Three. Three? Does it stop at three? Yes. Do we have to do all the math we did? Yeah. Oh, your homework ones, yeah. This will be on the right? Your... I'm recording right now. I mean, I'm if we stop, then I'm done recording. Because it's range. Oh, oh, crap. This is a lot. Okay, your range is y has to be less than or equal to three because it, the highest it goes to is three. The interval of increase from left to right, it increases first. So x has to be less than two because that's your value where it turns. Yes? I can't hear you. Okay. 